Colonel, your men have been in camp now for some time. What's their morale like? The morale is excellent. Absolutely are they, excellent. Are they itching to get out on the job? Well, obviously they are, yes. And uh, they'll get out uh, as soon as we've been given our commitments. But in the meantime, some are getting out, as you know, on these uh, uh, reconnaissance visits. Is, are these men the crack units of the Canadian Army? Yes, both the, uh, both the regiments represented here, the uh, Royal Van Duziem and the Royal Canadian Dragoons are both crack regiments. Have they both got long war histories? Yes, they have. They're two of the oldest regiments in Canada. Are most of these men French-speaking? Uh, in the Royal Van Duziem, that's that the Royal uh, 22nd, this is correct. Uh, the bulk of them, or the majority of them, are French-speaking. In the reconnaissance squadron of the Royal Canadian Dragoons, no. Do you think this is going to present a bit of a problem in dealing with this? No, we don't anticipate a problem here. The, uh, uh, many of them, uh, many more understand uh, English than speak it. All the officers speak English, they're all bilingual. And uh, the uh, bulk of the NCO speak English. And after all, in any negotiation that goes on, it's really the officer and the NCO that will do the negotiating. So we don't anticipate any problem at all. What do you see as your greatest problem? I don't see. Uh, we won't know what our greatest problem is until we've been given our task. You've seen the British positions so far. Um, do you think that you'll move straight into them, or will you have a new idea of keeping a peace force? Uh, where we move, of course, we, we will move into any uh, area that uh, has been allocated to us by the UN military authorities, but uh, whether we take over British positions or whether we don't, I assume we would because they're the only positions on the island, but uh, just exactly which positions uh, we move into or where we're deployed, we don't know yet until... Uh, uh, the UN military authorities have assigned us uh, our operational tasks, which of course they haven't to date. When the Bonaventure ships and the equipment is landed, will this force be a highly mobile one? Yes, it will. It, uh, it will have a high degree of mobility. It will. The, um, the reconnaissance squadron, of course, will give it a lot of its mobility. Uh, but uh, apart from that, the, uh, we have uh, a large percentage of jeeps. Uh, we'll have good communications. We'll have everything, I think, that we need to do the job. Do you think, sir, you'll be out here for longer than three months? I won't answer that question. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Colonel Amy, your men have been cooped up in camp for some time now. What's their morale like? They're itching to get out then. Many of these lads are French speaking, aren't they? Do you think this is going to create quite a problem for you? Do it again. Many of your lads are, are French-speaking. Do you think this is going to create a problem for you? Do these men represent the crack units of the Canadian Army? They've got a very good war record then. When the Bonaventure lands and the equipment's unloaded, will this force be a very mobile one? You've been taken round the British positions. Do you think you're going to move into them or will you make your own? Do you think you'll be out here for longer than three months? When you are.